All right, ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, grab that popcorn, grab some soda, get some snacks, and get ready for a show. Today, we're going to cover and go over somewhat of uh, some of what I consider to be the worst mistakes out there when it comes to buying a used sailboat, and all highlighted for us on the big screen by some sailing YouTube bloggers. Now, I'm not putting these channels down or picking on them. A lot of them did a lot of really, really hard work, but thanks to them, it's all highlighted in clear black and white. A lot of the common mistakes that are made when it comes to buying a used sailboat. So let's get right into it. Check out some things and some a lot of what I would consider huge mistakes when it comes to buying a used sailboat. Now, first up, we have Odd Life Crafting. This is a couple, very, very hardworking. They bought this absolute train wreck of a vessel. Now, what is the boat itself? Actually, before we go into what the boat actually is, let's go back in time and kind of understand the thought process and where this journey started. Now, if we pop on over to their YouTube channel right here, you can see these guys have been making YouTube for about six years. Now, originally they started out as the van lifers. Now, I'm sure you've all seen the big boom in van life about six years ago. Everybody got bought a van and they were going to be YouTube famous, travel the world, see all kinds of stuff and uh, cook out a little propane stoves. Well, that didn't really work out. Uh, their views weren't really cranking uh, and everybody does YouTube for views. So. That didn't really work. And then we went to the tiny home. We're going to do a container ship house. So that was their next uh, adventure to the world of YouTube. That lasted for a little while. But as you can see, views didn't really work out for that. And again, everybody does YouTube for views. So after that, about, let's see here. How long ago was it? It is this little container home thing for quite some time. Now. After that, about four years ago, they bought this absolute train wreck of a sailboat. That's this one, the one that you see right here. And they paid an astronomical amount for this vessel. They paid almost $50,000 for this absolute train wreck of a boat. Now, they did what everybody does. They're just trying to latch on to whatever the uh, current hype is on YouTube and what's gonna have the most eyeballs. So then they buy the dumpster sailboat, do a lot of hard work, and they refit that thing for years. Uh, I think like over two years or something, they refitted that thing. And then they got uh, about a year of actual sailing done on that boat. And then, as most people do, you just kind of realize your boat's a trash can. Uh, regardless of what you did to it, because you started with a bad foundation. So as we scroll here, keep on going down. Now, like I said, they sailed for about two years. Then they sold the dumpster of a boat. Now, it's a miracle they even sold the boat. And I credit a lot of that to their large YouTube following and getting eyeballs on that particular boat. Now, the problem lies and the amount of time, money, and effort they spent on that boat. Now, I don't know how old most of my audience is. I mean, I do, according to analytics. So with as old as I am, I don't have this kind of time to waste, nor do I have those kind of finances. Now, these guys were fantastic, and their video of how much it actually cost, they broke it down and gave you a pretty good idea of what it truly cost for them to do that and how long it took. And the black and white numbers are absolutely insane. Under no circumstances would this ever make sense whatsoever. Now, they also go in depth in their video and explain they never would have been able to do this refit without donations. It's just that simple. And they tell you in black and white. And again, when I'm trying to help you guys get on the water sooner than later, I'm trying to do it from a standpoint of you're not going to be asking for handouts or donations and things like that. I want to get you 
the most solid foundation that we can possible. Now back to the boat. This is a custom steel sailboat. And if you scroll on down their website, their website is just a long one page nonsensical disaster of a website. But eventually we'll get down here and we can see the boat. Meet Odd, cool name for a sailboat, kind of like it. Um, but she's a Tropic 1200. That's what the vessel is. And if we pop on over, let's find out some data on what the boat actually is. Because they do things in liters and meters. Uh, not into it, man. So let's take a look. So here we are over on sailboat data. Now you can't find out a lot of information on this boat because uh, it's so gosh darn old and it's custom. But length overall, just over 45 feet, almost a 14 foot beam. Not sure the length of the waterline based on the age of the vessel. We're going to assume she's about a 32 foot length of the waterline, probably maybe 36, but it's not that far up there. Now, it was a two cabin. It's really a one cabin because the V-berth on this particular vessel is kind of a trash can. Uh, let's see if we can get you some pictures of the interior. It's pretty hard to find these boats because, again, no one sails these boats. And as suspected, it's about impossible to find uh, decent pictures. You can see here on Google, it's mainly their boat that shows up because they're the only people silly enough to have bought that particular make and model and try to refit it. Nobody's sailing that boat. It's cost prohibitive. Now, if we break down the cost on what they actually spent, it's insane. So these guys paid $43,417 for the vessel. They then, throughout the refit, they spent another $122,000 roughly for the refit, marinas, things like that, bringing the total cost to this absolute disaster of a vessel to over $165,000. That is ludicrous. And they go through and they break down the amount of hours that they spent and they calculated their hourly rate at just over $2. I'm sorry. My time is worth more than $2 an hour. I don't care what we're doing. I'm not doing anything for two bucks an hour. I don't know about you, but two bucks an hour isn't quite going to cover it for me. Now, they ended up selling the vessel and they say they sold the vessel for $186,000. Now, that would be roughly $20,000 in profit on the vessel, but it's not because you've got a selling broker there that's going to ask for 10%. So that wipes out all of your uh, quote unquote profit. You're not ahead of the ball here. You used years of your time refitting the boat and then got a year or something out of it sailing wise and then turned around and sold it because by that time you had finally got on the water and realized that that specific model isn't going to work for you. And that's a big, big problem when it comes to people buying these refit sailboats. They don't have any experience actually sailing, so they don't know what they need. And unfortunately, they go to places like YouTube to get their information. And more often than not, they're steered in the wrong direction. And we're going to see a bunch of that today with the wrong foundation bought. Now, if you look at the final price, $165,000. Now, if we go over to Yacht World and start looking at boats for $165,000, let me show you what you can actually get. So for that kind of money, let's take a look. Because in reality, a lot of people, they'll go and they'll tell you that, uh, you know, well, now they know the ins and outs of their boats, all this nonsense shit you're going to hear. You can learn the inside and outside of your boat by actually sailing. And it's better that you have the on the water experience than you do repairing fiberglass. All the boat things, they're not that difficult. You can kind of learn them on the fly as you're actually sailing. So for $160,000, let's cruise on down here. Let's see what, what we can get. Let's go ahead and adjust our year here because we don't need to be buying you know, some other train wreck of a refit boat, especially not for that kind of money. So for that kind of money, you want to cross oceans? That's my assumption. We can get ourselves 2014 Bavaria Cruiser 45. This thing's more than capable of going around the world. No problem, as a matter of fact. And it's huge, huge swim platform, dual helms, very, very nice boat, tons of room, far, far bigger than that boat. Uh, and that is just one example. Now, if we cruise on down, we can get into some even better boats. Let's go up a little bit in price here. 
you can get the Oceanus 38.1. The 38.1 is actually bigger than their vessel as far as livable space goes. It's newer. It's also a 2018. So you get yourself almost a brand new boat. And then somebody's going to say, yeah, but their boat's steel. Fantastic. I don't plan on hitting icebergs. So most people, the benefits of a steel hull are you're never going to see them. Um, and then the downfalls of a steel hull, you're going to see them all the time because they require a ton of maintenance. Also takes a lot more wind to get going when you're talking about a steel hulled vessel. They are incredibly, incredibly heavy. And then a bunch of people who've never actually crossed an ocean are now going to hop in my comments and start trying to tell me how great a steel sailboat is and all this nonsense. They were so great, they'd still make them. And then someone's going to say, well, they make them because of cost. They stopped making them. And now they but shut up, man. You don't know what you're talking about. So if we keep on going in that price range, we haven't even hit the 165 mark yet. I can get myself a 2020 Geno Sun Odyssey. That's probably a small one. It's my assumption. It's a 2020. Yeah. 349. 349 is a fantastic boat. I would take this 349 over their boat in a heartbeat. Um, but you can kind of keep going again. A 2014 Bavaria Cruiser. You've got all kinds of options for that uh, for that price range. And again, the only benefit people are going to try to come up with is now you know your boat in and out. I'd rather learn my boat in and out while sailing and learning how to actually sail and boat check in and out of countries, things like that, than I would becoming an expert at fiberglass repair. If I want to become an expert at, uh, let's say, sailboat engines, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go take a class on sailboat engines and marine engines. It's fairly inexpensive. You can bang it out in a couple of weeks, and you're going to actually know more than they do after their two-year refit for sailboat engines. The same thing is true when it comes to fiberglass repair or rigging or anything like that. You can go take some classes and bang it right out and be all done in a matter of six months versus years and $160,000. So as we're cruising along here, I mean, we get up right around to what they're into the boat for. And you can start getting some insanely nice vessels. And Ellen Impression 45 is a stunning boat. The Impression 40, even this 389, a 2019. So again, your resale value is much, much closer to where you bought it for. If you go over and start looking at X charters, it's insane what you could get. And let's go take a look at those. Now, here we are over in the X charters, We've gone over the benefits of these a million times. So if I go up in price to what, again, they wound up being into that boat for, I'm looking at a 2015 50 footer, <laughs> a 2017 48 footer. I mean, it's insane. I get a 2016 469. Are you insane? There is nothing in the world that would make their boat better than this boat. Nothing. I don't care if the hole's made out of diamonds. Um, this is a far better boat. Not this particular one, because this one's a trash can. Uh, so let's actually find a good one we can compare it to. And Yacht World likes it, or Moorings likes to do its nonsense here. So let's see. All right. So get back up there in price. Go back up. Uh, let's see. I see if we find a good one. So... 2017 Sun Odyssey 519. I've sailed this boat all over the place. Not this particular one, but the 519. It's a stunner. It'll get everything in the world done. And it's absolutely enormous. So if you just start looking at black and white numbers, and again, that's all that I'm looking at. Hats off to those guys. They did a fantastic job. Uh, a lot of hard work, but in my opinion, wasted work. Uh, there's a little phrase in the world called work smart, not hard. And in my opinion, they kind of took the route of working hard, not smart. There was better ways financially to go about this. And you'd have had a lot more sailing experience at the end of the day than they wound up with. So that's just one example of a, in my opinion, it's a financially bad mistake to go that route. And that's kind of what I'm always trying to highlight for you guys. Now, next up on our world of financial flub ups is Expedition Evans. I'm sure you guys have all heard of these people. They bought this Beneteau 49 footer. Now they paid just over a hundred grand for this boat, uh, or right around a hundred grand or something. I can't remember what it was. And then they spent, it was at least a year refitting this thing. And keep in mind, this is a salvaged vessel. It's always going to be a salvaged vessel. Now they put out some pretty bad information in one of their videos where they had it, uh, surveyed after they were all done with the refit. And they said, the surveyor says it's not salvage anymore. The boat's always a salvage. It's always worth less money than a non-salvage boat. It's always going to be a salvage boat. Now, again, if we pop on over to their YouTube channel. What 
are we going now they've deleted a lot of their initial videos because they're pretending to be something that they're not so initially same thing it was the school bus van life stuff uh you know tiny home in paradise bought a van didn't really work for them view wise they had a whole bunch of these videos with not very many views then they went on this rampage and bought this uh salvage sailboat at auction they needed an absolute atrocious amount of work and i broke it down before in a video now these guys spent i think it was a year and a half or something refitting this Beneteau 49 uh something like that a year and a half or something uh here's the one where they give you bad information certain survey um and then you know and then they went on to say they needed a dinghy and then got sponsored and yada, yada yada so for these guys from one standpoint it got them a youtube following um but as far as the boat goes it was a financial train wreck um and these guys are so far behind on their videos i don't know what they're doing and i don't know where they're at or anything uh their views have dropped substantially over the years because people have just realized their absolutely fake is just the reality of it and their initial jump up with the purchase of the boat there was some fishy things going on there with analytics and stuff where it it wasn't in an organic growth path that they took uh to getting more views and subscribers and they had a lot of their views because of all the travel restrictions over the last few years but anyway so a beneteau 49 they paid about 100 grand for it they spent a year year and a half refitting it they dumped another hundred and twenty thousand dollars into the boat or something bringing their price to 220k for a 2008 beneteau 49 salvage now again if we go and look for that price, you can pick up one that's not a salvage boat. It's worth more money because it's not salvaged. It's just that simple. And again, if we pop on over to the X charters and look, for that kind of money, it's absolute insanity. For 225 grand, you can get a 2017, not a 2008, and it's 180 grand. You save about 40 grand and you don't have a salvage vessel. Um, it just financially speaking, it makes no sense. You know, if we go up to the actual price they're into that boat by the time that they're done, and they didn't account for their time at all. Those guys are into that boat for a ton of money. If you just assume your time's worth 10 bucks an hour, the purchase price of their boat's up there in 250, 260. Um, but even like right around, let's see here, let's adjust some things. Price high to low go back a couple of pages here and get kind of really what they're at so you could have gotten a 2018 519 for 235 not salvage ready to go rock and rolling get on that boat tomorrow you could cross the ocean no problem um same thing with a lot of these boats you know uh, you can do a 2012 54 footer if you wanted to 2006 i mean your options are endless so once again this from a financial standpoint, it makes no sense. Now, for these guys, it got them this little YouTube following, and you know now they're banging out the uh, bikini cry face drama videos, uh, as all sailing vloggers do. The drama face, uh, the cry face, get a bikini, the drama face, bikini, cry face. It's a standard recipe on YouTube to try to get views. Cry face again. This girl's got a terrible cry face, by the way. Um, so it's just their standard recipe: bikini, bikini. Uh, you know, and I'm, hey, do your thing. I don't care what you do. It's the standard recipe on YouTube to try to get YouTube views, and that's the whole point of what all these people are doing. It's just to get YouTube views so that they can make a living and then go do their stuff. And hey, that's fine. That's kind of like the recipe, and it works for some, and it doesn't work for others. But again, I look at boat buying from a realistic standpoint. I'm assuming you're not trying to be a YouTube cry face bikini model doing nonsense. I'm assuming you actually want to get on the water and start sailing. So that's where I look at boats from. Nothing about the previous two channels decisions made any sense financially. It was a terrible financial decision. Uh, and again, the whole, but now they know their boat stuff. Come on, man. 
Go take some classes and learn some boats. It's not that difficult. You don't need to spend a year and a half, two years in a marina roasting your butt off, dropping cash hand over fist to learn your boat inside and out. Go take a couple classes, some marine engine classes, some fiberglass repair, some basic boat electrical system classes. You'll be done in six months. You'll know more than these guys do. That way you can get onto a boat, know your boat in and out in about a month instead of a year and a half. It just makes no sense to go this route. And we can keep on going here. Now, up next on my train wreck financial decisions, Sailing Project Atticus. I'm assuming you guys know who these people are. They got a little YouTube channel right over here. Now, if you remember, if you've ever watched these guys, they started out on like an Allied 30. Now, that was their first... Uh, Dip my toes in the sand of terrible financial decisions and dumb stuff we could do in the world of sailing. They bought this absolute dumpster of a sailboat in Key West. I used to be docked right next to them in Key West at Sunset Marina. Um, this boat was a train wreck from the start. But again, these guys had the goal of being able to be YouTubers full time. Hey, that's awesome, man. Good for you. Glad you had a goal. But up here at the top, they used to have, we believe you don't need a lot of money to blah, 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 live your dreams and sail the world or something. So... Again, it's all a facade to get you to watch their videos, right? And then you have formed this parasocial relationship with them. Think uh, you're involved with them in their lives, just like, you know, some actor or something. So these guys had this trash can of a vessel for uh, years and years and years. And that was their first foray into, if we're dramatic, we can probably get views. Now, they didn't get a lot of views at first, as most sailing channels. And then they kind of you know, like their second season or whatever, kind of started getting some views, some, not a lot, but some, um, and then kind of went along here and, you know, their videos were just always crying about stuff. Um, and then they did a dramatic video where they sold that dumpster of a vessel. Cause that boat was an absolute trash can made no sense. Um, but again, then they had to raise to do a GoFundMe. And they raised like $200,000. This is where they started the, uh, oh my God, should we sell our boat thing? It's all this crocodile tier nonsense. Um, and then they went on this hunt for boats, you know, and they enlisted the help of some well-known sailors and stuff. And we're looking at boats, checked out some. Then they bought this absolute trash can of a vessel, a Pacific Sea Craft 40. They might be thinking to yourself, oh my God, Pacific Sea Craft's fantastic. No, they're not. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons why. So if we look over here at Sailboat, data now first up she got a 12 and a half foot beam that's pretty small for a 40 foot boat she has a length of the waterline of 31.25 feet and a length overall of 42. you get a livable space of a 31 foot boat you're going to be paying for over a 43 foot boat it's absolutely insane so these guys paid like 200 grand for this trash can of a pacific sea craft 40. and then let me scroll up really fast boom here we are now if we go back to the latest videos now, their whole reason for buying that boat was we're going to sail the world and do all this stuff. Uh, so they bought that boat for like 200 grand. They put another hundred and something thousand dollars into it. Now they're into the boat for 300 and some change. They've done one Atlantic crossing in three and a half years. So again, it's back to that whole, we're going to go sail the world thing. The reality is 90% of your time is going to be spent coastal cruise and island hopping. I don't care what you think you're going to do. That's what you're actually going to do. So they two hundred thousand dollars in that boat another hundred and some change jumped into it they're into the boat for about 330k for a pacific sea craft 40. <laughs> now these boats tend to sell high because they're just hoping somebody's dumb enough to buy it um like this boat's been for sale for i don't know five years um these boats don't sell because nobody buys them they got a bad foundation too old of a foundation especially for that kind of money there's far better boats out there so again if you just look for that kind of money, I mean, even their initial purchase price could have got an Oceanus 45, 2018 for 200K. No hurricane damage, no nothing, way bigger. It's got a length of the waterline of like 42 feet here. Um, so a much, much bigger boat than the Pacific Seacraft 40. This boat's a dumpster. It's a canoe stern. Access in and out of the vessel is incredibly difficult. She had a modified full keel with a skeg hung rudder, neither here nor there. Because again, they're not doing anything. Did one Atlantic crossing. And after 10 years of sailing, they had to hire a captain to do the Atlantic crossing. So what I'm trying to get at here is that doing a boat refit makes no sense financially. 99% of the time, financially, it's going to make zero sense whatsoever. Secondly, 
if you do like this couple did and you buy your first little trash can boat and do some fixing up work and you can spend years doing that you'd be coastal cruising island hopping and then when it comes time to do some big boy sailing you're gonna have to hire a captain because you don't know enough about sailing and boating to actually get the job done because you spent so much time fixing your boat you never even learned how to really sail you learned how to fix your boat and again you can just do that with some classes inside of six months instead of several years there's just a much more direct line from point a to b that you can follow when it comes to buying a sailboat and learning how to sail now if you want to buy your first little fixer upper that's fine man you know don't spend that much money you want to buy a boat learn how to sail again don't spend that much money kind of get your sea legs figure out what might work for you and then from there go on to your bigger boat but don't don't spend nine years or six years or even three years on some little dumpster of a boat. And what you absolutely do not want to do is to dump your entire savings into a refit boat for the purchase price, because all you're ever going to do is just be refitting that boat. And then by the time that you're done, you'll finally realize the boat that you got and the foundation is not going to work for your needs. And then you're just going to wind up selling the boat. So again, sailing Atticus, this, you know, a scale from one to 10, one being bad, 10 being good. These guys are a solid one with financial decisions when it comes to sailboats. If you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to our website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now I do offer full consulting over here. Now there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one on one one time consult It's on sale right now. It's only one hundred dollars. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one on one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth or we can go over several boats whatever it is you need you can grab the one-time consult now if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out you're trying to determine like offer prices things like that you can grab a consulting package and this will be three different consults so we can go over multiple boats we can touch back and forth lifetime access to the members area all of those good things this is currently on sale it's only 375 and then if you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's going to work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. That way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy. We can get you out on boats. We can look at some things. We can really, really get in depth and narrow down your search. We'll come up with offer prices. We'll go over the survey together, reduction in our prices, sea trials, all kinds of stuff. That's where you want the 24 seven consulting package. If you're really, really serious about getting on the water. Also something that helps is my spreadsheet. Now, you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only $10. So I published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago. It's the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time. So you also get that. It's only $10. So over my web suit site, fantastic place to go. Um, I've got a little bit of apparel up here, stuff like that. But again, what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you. So head on our website, grab a consulting package. Let's get you over in the members area. Let's get started.